Hello and welcome back to the OTB channel. Today I'm going to indulge myself a little. I'm going to look at an arch-based distro and I'm going to use a distro that I've never looked at before called Reborn OS. And here's a spoiler, I like it a lot. See you after the intro. Okay, welcome back. Um, yeah, so it's been a tough week, and I was thinking about what am I going to do today. And I thought, you know, I haven't looked at an Arch distro for quite a while. And you all know, it is my uh, preferred distro Arch. And uh, I keep being asked to have a look at Reborn OS. And I don't really know why, why it, it's evaded me so far and kind of gone under the surface. I... I've been aware that it's out there, but I've never tried it. And to be honest, I've tried a lot of the Arch-based distros. And uh, so I thought it was high time we, we gave it a spin. And as I said in the spoiler, I'm really quite impressed. So let's just do a general overview for those of you who perhaps don't know me. Uh, a while ago, I, I produced a video where I said, there can be only one. And for me, that one was... Arch Linux. Arch Linux is a rolling release distro, uh, which if you install vanilla Arch, has to be manually installed on the command line. Now, it's not that it's hard to install because it isn't. Um, it's fairly straightforward, but it is quite handomatic. And I'm aware that many people are put off by that. Um, I've done a, a how-to a couple of times on this uh, on this channel and on my GitLab, I have a document up there where you can just copy and paste to install Vanilla Arch. But it can be something that puts many people off. And I don't have a problem with people who just want to run an Arch system but don't want to have to go through that manual installation process. I, I think that's fine. And, and I mix and match myself. The system I'm on here, which is my Intel NUC, has an Arch system which has been running for over a year and I install this the Arch way. On my laptops, I'm using a mixture of Endeavor OS and Manjaro uh, because if I'm lazy and I just want a, a quick install, I will use you know something that uses uh, the Calamaris installer or something similar. And I think my favorite so far to date is Endeavor OS which gets you as near to a vanilla arch as you can get really on a, on a simple install. Yes, it has its own repo, but most of the desktop environments are pretty much vanilla that you can install, and it allows you to install them from the net, and it basically uses the arch uh, repositories along with the wonderful arch user repository, which gives you all the choice in the world. Um, so... Am I one of those those Arch users who says, you must, you absolutely must do an Archway install? Nope, I'm not. I'm not. You do what you want to do. I think it can be useful just so you can see how Arch is put together by doing an Arch installation the manual way sometimes. Um, but you may want to just get used to I don't know, managing and configuring an Arch system yourself, and you, you want to get an easy install in order to allow you to do that. Or like me, you may have done a, an Archway install many times, but uh, you, sometimes you just want it, an easy click, click, click process. However you want to go. Let me get rid of some of the myths uh, of using Arch, though. People who say Arch is hard, it's not hard. It does have a lot of updates as a rolling release. Uh, I have not found it to be unstable because of that. In fact, as I say, I've, I've had this particular installation on for over a year now, and I've not had any issues. There's the odd little blips, but if you go to the Arch uh, Linux page, it normally posts fixes to common blips, and they don't happen that often. 
and uh, I found it to be really stable. Lots of updates come down. Uh, you need to get into a routine so that you're not constantly installing them. I install my updates once a week, and that seems to be fine. I don't call, come across any other problems. You probably don't want to be leaving it for much longer than that. The more updates you have to install, the more that you're risking, you know, a potential breakage. But as long as you follow a path, you'll be great. And if you put that against uh, the fact that we have the Arch user repository where you can install pretty much anything, and what I like is you can install packages from source, but then manage them with a package manager. To me, all these things add up to the reason why Arch is my preferred system. So when I saw another Arch system that is an easy install, I thought, well, I've got to give it a try. Interestingly enough, that the parent, the original parent of, of uh, this particular distro, Reborn OS, was Antigos. And Antigos was also the parent of Endeavor OS. So they both have similar backgrounds. There are differences between the two, and I'll go through them in a minute. But essentially, they come from a, a pretty solid stable. I never used Antigos, but Antigos is not in development anymore, which is a real shame. But anyway, enough chat. Let's go over to the Reborn uh, webpage and have a look what it's all about. So you should see on your screen now the Reborn OS uh, website, which is just rebornos.org. Um, made for you, made with you, apparently. And uh, the strap line is nearly unlimited choices. Now, I know what it means here. It, it offers you up to 10 different desktop environments that you can install. Uh, one of them's not a desktop environment. One is actually i3. Um, but you get the option on installation to choose what you want. The ISO, the install ISO, is actually GNOME, I know. But, you know, it's only the, the install medium. Um, I'm, I'm not a GNOME fan, just in case you weren't aware. Um, but you don't, you, you only use it for installation, so it's neither here nor there. Um, and by saying we've got 10 additional desktop environments that, that you can install, that in itself doesn't set it apart that much these days. Um, uh, the, uh, the standard Calamaris installer that the likes of Endeavor uses, you have the option to do a network install uh, or an online install, I think they call it, where you can actually choose which desktop you install from there. You normally start off with XFCE as the delivery system for Endeavor. So it's got the same functionality, perhaps a little bit more in terms of choice right at the word go, but, but you're, you're pretty much there with both. It gives you the option, though, and this probably goes over and above what Endeavor currently does, in terms of picking alternative features that you want to install right from the get-go. So different office suites. You can set it up with uh, Steam or Wine. You can install your power management for laptops and so on right from the get-go, which is nice to see. I also have to say, I mean, the, the, there's the page of the installer. Worth saying on the installer, it is not a Calamaris installer. It is their own installer, which I think may be from Antigos. I'm not entirely uh, sure, um, but it is different. But as you'll see in a minute, I found it to be fairly easy to, to, to use. Uh, and the main point of this review is I'm going to be looking at the installation more than the ultimate desktop at the end, because we've looked at so many Arch desktops anyway. Um, so all good. Uh, what does it say? High performance. Yeah, great. Uh, flat pack support. It's not built in from the get-go, but with a quick flick of a button, you can install it. It even has Anbox support, which I think is like a virtual ma machine or, or some sort of environment where if you wanted, a little bit like Wine, you, you can run Android apps. 
Uh, wouldn't be something that would interest me, but it might interest you. One of the things that does set it apart, though, is it has a really nice um, graphical interface for a whole range of different settings once it's installed, which allow you to do everything, including installing uh, other desktop environments. So, um, yeah, all pretty good. What do they tell us about it? Generally speaking, let's get, just go to the About page. We're a team of developers who, although lacking the seasoned experience of more well-established distros, still hope to bring you the best OS possible. Okay, so they're trying to produce an ISO that's packed full of different features and choices. It's got Pac-Man AUR support uh, enabled out of the box and a customized version of the package manager CNCHI. I, I, I do pronounce this a little bit later on. I would have pronounced it Sinchi, but I, Kninchi or something, but I think it's Sinchi. We'll see. Um, I don't know why people decide to use such awkward names. Um, so lots of desktop environments. Um, it looks quite nice. The, the website itself, I'm not sure about it, doesn't look as nice as uh, the one provided by uh, Endeavor OS. What about help? Do we have a wiki or something? Let's have a look at the Reborn OS wiki and see what we have there. Oh, and that's quite nice. We have a list of how-tos if you want to do various things that you can just click on. Right, okay. I've downloaded it. Uh, I like the fact that uh, it's a torrent that's offered. Uh, you don't have to use a torrent. Uh, you can use whatever you want to use. But uh, what I did was I simply uh, went to the main page. I clicked on download. A new installer is available. I went to the first link, uh, the OSDN download page, and I downloaded the torrent file. The torrent uh, came down in, you know, it's over two gigs in about three or four minutes. So for me, that's the easiest way to get it. Right, so let's see what I found. Let's go and have a look in on the virtual box at the installation and then a quick look over the system itself. Okay, so um, you should see Reborn OS uh, on the screen now. You'll already see I don't know why, pro probably because the guest editions aren't installed, but I couldn't get it to come up in full resolution, uh, the live ISO. Doesn't really matter, though, because at the end of the day, this is just for installation. What matters is that we can get it to full resolution afterwards. And what you see is uh, the GNOME desktop there. Now, I'm not going to be installing GNOME, but GNOME is the delivery system that Reborn OS uses, which is absolutely fine. I don't have an issue with that. Um, I do like the wallpaper, I have to say. Uh, I hope that wallpaper is available when I actually get it installed. And uh, yeah, I, it, it's 1680 by 1050 at the moment, which, which is usable. Um, I think this might be dash to panel the extension it has uh, installed on, on the GNOME desktop. I believe if you install GNOME, the GNOME desktop itself, that you don't get this configuration. This is just on, on the live CD. But actually, I don't mind that look to GNOME. It's better than the default as far as I'm concerned. But anyway, let's, uh, let, let's launch the installer, which I believe is down here, and see what we get. Right, so let's click install. And this is um, not the standard Calamaris or Ubiquiti installer. As I said earlier, this is its own thing. Uh, CNCHI. Now, I would have pronounced this Knitchi, uh, but I, I'm reliably informed that uh, it, it's pronounced something like Sinchi. Sinchi? If I've got that wrong, I'm sure you'll let me know. But anyway, so let, let's proceed onwards. It's actually quite nice to have something different. And so I thought it was worth taking you through the installer. 
So it's already on English, so we'll go up to these buttons here and click Next. And it does a system check. And it's checking we've got at least 8 gigs of available storage space, although that's obviously going to depend on uh, what desktop environment we install. Is it plugged into a power source? Is it connected to the internet? That's actually vital because uh, Reborn OS does a net install. So it's going to be pulling the packages down from the internet, uh, which has advantages. The advantages are mainly that it's going to be fully up to date once it's installed. The disadvantages are that it could take a little bit of, of a while to, to actually do that. Um, it checks that the installer is up to date and no temporary packaging issues that would interfere. Okay, all good. Let's move on. We want uh, English UK. There we go. And next, it hasn't picked a reason, so let's just see if we can hit on London and uh, use network time protocol for clock syn synchronization. Okay, that's nice. Uh, keyboard UK, yeah, all good. And now we get to choose what our desktop environment will be. So it starts off with, if you just want a base install, ba basically a plain arch install where you can install everything you want yourself, you would just go for this. So it's a nice, easy way to install the base. Having said that, I mean, doing a plain arch install to get yourself set up with a base really isn't that difficult. So <clears throat> unless you particularly want the Reborn OS repositories, I think you'd probably go with Vanilla Arch then. But I quite like the way that you've got a range of different options here. You've even got i3 if you want a Tyler. Uh, Budgie, Cinnamon, Deep In, Gnome, obviously, i3, KDE, uh, which is the latest Plasma desktop, LXQT, Mate, Openbox. Okay, I presume that's going to be quite vanilla. Um, yeah, it's the most lightweight option offered by Reborn OS, um, but not recommended for users who are new to Linux. I sort of understand that, but... Uh, Hey ho. Then we have Pantheon. Um, I tried it when I had a look at elementary. Um, I wasn't blown away, to be honest. And then plain old XFCE. And by looking at that picture there, it looks to be pretty much vanilla. Now, you know I'm normally going to go for Marte. You know I am. So uh, I thought, no, not this time. Uh, what should I go for? And I thought one of the environments that I haven't looked at for quite a long time is Budgie. Um, so let's try putting a, a Budgie desktop on here. I did quite enjoy it. Um, I, I think I described it when I had a look at, uh, was it Solus, as uh, the way GNOME 3 probably should have been in my mind. Uh, quite a plain, straightforward desktop. But anyway, let's see what they do with it. I'm not expecting one that's highly customised. What I do like here is this. Um, you now get the option to add a range of different apps and features. Uh, show advanced features. I'm not quite sure what that's going to... Ah, so that gives us uh, a couple of extra entries. I see there that we have an entry for Broadcom driver support, which is, is really useful because Broadcom drivers are the wireless drivers that can still cause issues they are installable from uh, arch the aur but there are still a lot of distros out there where a broad com, com driver support isn't there from the the get-go of course even if you've got broadcom wireless you're going to need to plug it in in some way to get an interconnect internet connection for the installation anyway but let's just have a look and, and see what it says so you've got the option to add accessibility packages. I like the fact that they're not installed by default. System maintenance packages. And if you hover over here, it does tell you what it installs. So Bleach Bit, Stacer, Time Shift, Reborn OS Recovery. Let, let's click on that. AUR support. Now, that's on by default, and I'm going to keep that on because, to my mind, 
One of the biggest benefits of using an Arch system is the AUR. Bluetooth support, never use it. The Chromium web browser. That would be my preferred web browser, so I'm going to click on that. Common photo editing programs for Linux. So what is this going to install? The GIMP, GT Thumb, Rapid Photo Downloader, Dark Table. Yeah, go on, let's click on that. Oop. Common video editing programs. So that would install OpenShot, KDEN Live, TV, and Avidamux. Um, I'm not going to install that because I use Shotcut. Um, but I can see that if you do use something like KDEN Live or OpenShot, it's a nice, easy way to, to get it all pre-installed for you. Do you want a desktop email client? I'm, I'm going to give it a miss for the time being. Firefox is installed by default, but you can install the developer edition as well. You've got the opportunity to install free Office if you want. Uh, an alternative to LibreOffice or even Google's own, own browser, Chrome. Hardware analysis. Do you know, let's click on that as well. The kernel, the LTS version, is already on by default. I think that's a good option. I tend to use the LTS version by default. LibreOffice, yeah, you know, let's, let's do that. I wonder if that's the, uh, the fresh version. It doesn't actually say. But anyway, I'm not going to click for a file manager. We'll just use what comes uh, by default with Budgie. Do we want Opera? No, I'm not, not bothered about that. Popular games for Linux. Battle for Wesnoth, Supertux, Solitaire, Mine, Sudoku. We'll give that a miss at the moment. Printing support is on by default. And you have the option there for power saving. Really useful if uh, you've got a laptop, it'll install TLP and Thermald uh, to optimize the performance of your battery. Great to see that right at the beginning. Uh, Redshift, QO Notes. Uh, what's this? Is it run Windows? So this is for wine installation, basically. Um, and it also comes with Play on Linux and Lutris both installed. Okay, really useful. A spell check, Spotify, Steam plus Play on Linux. Support for Firewire devices, Vivaldi, VLC. I'm going to install VLC. A wallpaper cycler, Windows sharing SMB, and WP Office if you want that. I, I really quite like this. It gives you um, a lot of nice options. This is perhaps what sets it slightly apart from the likes of Endeavor. So let's just move on. And there's a little warning here about the uh, Arch user deposit repository. Okay, all good. It's recommended to use an additional cache. The installer needs to download a ton of packages from the internet but it can't be the same device where you're installing. Well, this isn't an option for me because uh, I've only got the one partition here, but I can see that that may well help if you've got another spare partition on your system. We'll just leave that as none for the time being. Right, so how would I like to proceed? Let Sinshi sort the mirrors, leave the mirror lists as they are, or manage the mirrors manually i'm just going to let since she sort the mirrors automatically and then we get to the the point of what you want to do erase disk and install reborn os uh, encrypt it use lvm set your home to a different partition or choose exactly what you want i'm just going to go with the automatic option here um, so what we have there is the virtual box uh, hard drive uh, and I also want that for the bootloader installation. I'm not doing a, um, a UEFI installation here. I'm just doing a standard BIOS installation. Right, so let's set our name, OTB. Right, so the host name doesn't auto-populate. Auto so let me just put OTB Reborn. Uh, 
my username is OTB and I'll insert my password here. Uh, require my password to log in, yes please. So then you get a chance to check. So it's all about UK and it's Budgie that I'm installing. Okay, good stuff. Strangely enough, oh no, no, I, I, I was going to say it hasn't included the things I chose, but it has. We've got, we've got a little list here. So Chromium, hardware analysis, photo editing, etc., etc. Right, let's move on. Am I sure? Yes, I am, please. Right, so uh, according to this, it's 12.47. Um, I'm not going to take you through this. It's likely to take a while, and we'll come back once it's done. Right, so uh, installation is now complete, and I've booted into the Budgie desktop. The installation took 16 minutes for me. Um, don't forget, it's pulling all the packages down from the internet, so it's not just uh, installing them from the ISO. Your uh, experience as far as how long it takes is going to depend largely on your internet connection, but it went flawlessly, and it rebooted, and as you can see, we're, we're into full HD automatically now that we've rebooted, so all great. I'm immediately greeted by... This little uh, interface here, uh, add a flat pack repository or add the flat pack repository or remove from startup. I'm just going to shut that down for the time being. If you want flat packs, that's great. Um, personally, if you're using Arch, you've got the AUR there as well. <sighs> it's up to yourself, but, but I've not got to a situation where I've not found something that I couldn't install that was just in the standard repos uh, or the AUR. So I wanted to show you the installation more than anything else, uh, rather than the budgie desktop. But if we just quickly have a look through what's been installed, uh, we've got all of our accessories, and you can see things like Stacer and so on. I asked to be installed right from the word go, so it has, has done that. LibreOffice Math. In fact, it's got the whole of the LibreOffice suite here, and it is LibreOffice Fresh. Graphics, I asked for the image editing applications to be installed, and it's installed uh, the GIMP and Darktable, which is all good. I asked for Chromium to be installed, and it's done that. I don't know what Polari is. Oh, it's an IRC client. Okay, that's fine. There you've got LibreOffice. There you've got LightDM GTK greeter settings, which is great, and you've obviously got printer uh, printer support installed. Add and remove software. I don't know what this is going to take me to, but let's have a look. Um, okay, that looks pretty much to me like Pamac. It is indeed Pamac. And let's just have a look at the preferences here, which, yep, yeah, it's always going to ask me to authenticate. So, AUR support, enabled by default. Flatpak support, I haven't enabled, but you can if you want. And let's have a look at what repositories it's got installed. So, this is the Reborn OS repository, which is what sets it apart from a, a plain Arch system, really. And I'm just looking here, a lot of this is theme stuff. They've got their own Pamac AUR. Lots of different themes. Okay, other stuff that you can install. Um, and apart from that, we've got the core extra community and multi-lib, so the standard Arch repos. I wonder if Yay is installed. I know we've got AUR support. Um, come on. Come on, Pamac. Let's go back to the beginning. Have we got yay there? Hmm. I have mixed uh, experiences of using Pamac. I, I find it to be quite good for uh, simply looking at something like uh, how many updates you've got, but I tend not to use it. Oh, here we are, yay. Uh, so yay is installed. Okay, that's great. That would be my uh, preferred helper. So let's go back to the menu. Yeah, you've got Office. 
You've got uh, Light DM, Programming, CMake, and an Icon Browser. Um, a range of things in sound and video. I obviously didn't ask for uh, Kden Live, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to be installed, and it's not there. System tools, yeah. So I asked for things like Bleach Bit to uh, to be installed, and it's done that. It's got Time Shift there. The Pace uh, configuration uh, utility for per Mac, um, and a System Profiler and Benchmarker. What's this? Is this the GNOME Software Store? Yeah, it, it pretty much looks like it to me. Um, you might want to install things from here. That's all good. Uh, let's have a look at the software repositories here. Yeah, it looks like this is uh, for flat packs, if you've got flat packs uh, installed. Um, all good. Not a problem with that. Um, and utilities, and a range of utilities, including the system monitor. Uh, I'm not sure what a it's going to be using okay it's using about a gig of ram i've been clicking through stuff it's not dreadful in this day and age it's not exactly what you'd call lightweight budgie but again it's not dreadful let's go and have a quick look at the budgie desktop settings um so in fact let's just have a look at what the icon set is that's being used at the moment Oh, Adwaiter. I loathe Adwaiter. I really do. Um, to my mind, it's ugly. So let's see what options we have. Oh, hold on. Set the appearance of windows, decorations, and controls. Arc dark, arc light. Uh, I like arc dark. Okay, so we're getting a little bit better there. And... Right, we now have a range of options, including the flat remix theme. I do like the flat remix theme. Let's go for flat remix blue dark. Oh, yeah, that's starting to look uh, a little bit like what I want. Okay, that's nice. I like that. Um, the desktop, number of virtual desktops. Okay, great. Fonts, fine, whatever. Raven. So this is your your side menu there, and you can pick down here what you want the Raven menu to show. Windows, a range of options there. Nothing special though, that's all good. And then we've got the main system settings. So the thing about Budgie doesn't seem that integrated because of that. Uh, you seem to have uh, special settings just for Budgie, and then essentially, gnome settings uh so the network that's the bluetooth the background that's disappointing actually i i really liked that uh background that was on the installation iso but you know it's wallpaper it's neither here nor there um okay you've got a few bits and pieces there what would i choose i certainly wouldn't want to to keep this very plain blue background there uh what would i go for there's nothing that's jumping out at me, I've got to say. Um, what about that? Hmm. I don't know. Something perhaps a little bit darker. I'm going to go for something a little bit darker. What does that look like with uh, my file manager? Hmm. I'd have to play around with that. But, you know, let's just go back to what it was. There we go. Or I say, let's just go back to, to uh, where we were. It doesn't seem to want to change at the moment for some reason. Hmm. Could be. Oh, no, it is. It's just taking its own sweet time. So I'll go to that one. We'll see if that does it. That's strange, isn't it? Okay. Let's pick another one. Did, didn't seem to want to go back to the, the default. Perhaps it's because it, I need to click on that one to change it. whatever <laughs> notifications sharing sound power displays you should be able to see on the display we are indeed at 1920 by 1080 and everything's pretty much what you'd expect there so anything else of note 
Yeah, one thing that I come across that I really quite like, uh, actually it might be in uh, all or it could be in accessories. And where are we? It's the Reborn. There we are. Reborn OS Fire. Now this seems to be a specialized utility just for Reborn OS. So it's obviously something that they've put together themselves. And really like the fact that you've got the option here to use LightDM uh, as your uh, login manager or SDDM, I suppose if you use Plasma, uh, you can select your greeter there. You can even go on and install another desktop. Simply click on the one that you want and click install. That's really nice. That is one of the things that sets it apart a little bit from, you know, a standard arch thing. System tasks. Uh, so this is a system, system maintenance tab where you can clear your cache and clean the journal and rank mirrors. Everything's turned off at the moment, but I like the fact that that's there and it's nice and straightforward. And then repair. You can reinstall Grub. Rebuild Grub, downgrade. Hmm, I don't quite know what that means. Downgrade to what? Or remove a package leaving dependencies behind. Okay, look, it's good to have these options. What about programs? Right, so you've got the option here to control the Mycroft uh, sound server. I've never used it. I've got audio turned off on this virtual machine. But I'm sure in terms of accessibility features, that's useful. And if for some reason, and I'm not quite sure you, why you would, unless you're just having a play, install Ambox, which is like a virtual environment where you can run Android applications. Okay, good. You then have a link to different tools. So Stacer, Pamax Software, Pac-Man Settings. Okay, so if I click on that, Okay, that's good. It brings up the Pace GUI. And the Arch Kernel Manager, what does that do? I'm presuming it's going to bring up a list of different kernels that we could install. And uh, yeah, okay, great. So refresh that. And so we can install standard Linux, Linux LTS. Uh, we're currently running the standard Linux kernel, but I know it installed LTS because I asked it to. And, uh, yeah, and you can see both are installed. If you want the Zen kernel or the Harden kernel, you can do that as well. So that's quite nice. Um, wormhole. What's Wormhole? It's an extremely secure, private, and open source alternative to AirDrop. Ah, right, okay. So it's a file sharing service. Never used it, but, hey, something to play, back, play with. This, though, is what I really like. Roll back your system. I don't know whether this uses time shift as a back end or whether it's something special, but clearly you just select your date there and uh, roll back your system to whatever it was like when you had no problems. Great. Love this as a little tool. Look, that's all I'm going to do today on, on the Budgie desktop itself. I mainly wanted to look at uh, the installer and how that worked. And in terms of getting an Arch system up and running very quickly, I love it. Yeah, all good. Let's have a chat. Right, so that's Reborn OS. Um, first impressions, I really like it. From my first look, see, um, for me, it feels as comfortable to use as uh, Endeavor OS. Um, the delivery of the installation was nice and smooth. Yes, it's a, it's a different installer to what I'm used to, Sinshi if I've got that right, uh, but it worked well. Um, I quite like Budgie. I know we had a, only had a quick look at it, but it, it's a decent desktop environment, the way GNOME 3 should have been done, in my opinion. And um, I like that graphical uh, 
system what was it called reborn os fire where you can roll things back you can change your login manager uh you can open up various configuration settings i thought that was really neat and a one button installation of different desktop environments very nice i liked it a lot um i have nothing negative to say about this and what i normally say is would i use it yeah i would i would um Endeavor OS has been my favorite vehicle for a quick install of Arch, but I would have no qualms about using this instead. Um, I'm surprised it's not a bit more popular, in fact, because uh, Endeavor OS is going from strength to strength to strength, and uh, this would certainly seem to be on a par. Yeah, there are a few differences. You've got a few more options for... Uh, customizing the installation perhaps than Endeavor. Not massive differences, but you end up with the same thing, um, a decent arch system that you can have a play with. That's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come and join me on my Facebook group. Um, by all means, go and watch me on Library. Library seems to be a platform that's starting to take off now. Um, it's taken a while, but it, it, it's building up. Uh, I'm quite impressed with it so far. And uh, of course, last but not least, guys, I do want to thank all my patrons. I'm afraid over the last few weeks with and over Christmas, with things being so busy, I haven't done the standard update to, to my Patreon page here. Um, I've done it today. There's been a few changes. We've got some new members. Uh, Glenn Genoway. I hope I'm pronouncing your surname uh, correctly, Glenn. Is it Genaway or Genaway? And Magnus Johansson. Uh, so welcome, guys. There's a couple of people dropped off. A lot, of, a few people changed their levels, but that's what happens. We seem to be staying at around 16, pretty constant with comings and goings. But uh, just to mention them all, Robert, Gary, cheers, guys. Corbinian, Aristoteles, Stormpick, Stephen, Mike. David, Entropy, UK, Richard, Ty, Philip Espy, Forest Rhodes, Patrick, Glenn, and Magnus. Um, thank you, guys. Um, really appreciate your support. You know that I've had some thoughts about Patreon, and um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know whether it's the right way for me to go at the moment, but I'm, I'm going to keep it there for the time being. Um Although I'm not going to push it as such. If people want to find me, they can find me. Um, re really appreciate the support and it's helped out a lot. Right, guys. So that's it for today. And uh, I'll see you next week. And stay well, everybody. Please. Cheers. <laughs>